The catastrophes described in ancient sources were traumatic experiences common to all mankind. Purged from conscious memory, these records are now interpreted as allegories, metaphors, and the trauma has been submerged in the unconscious. Collective amnesia. A revolutionary theory of the universe based on the records of the past has challenged the fundamental beliefs of modern science for more than two decades. Today, the unexpected findings of space explorations have confirmed many of the predictions of this theory. Mountains were born and mountains collapsed. Land and sea changed places. Great streams of lava flowed. The sea boiled and evaporated. Such were the scenes of unimaginable violence during the times of global catastrophe, as recorded by the ancients. Here in the New York Herald Tribune, uh, explosion in science, the artist's conception of what, uh, of what happened when the uh, uh, heavens burst, um, what happened uh, during the 1500 B.C. Uh, upheaval, which uh, we read about in the Bible as the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt, and the uh, phenomena or upheaval that, uh, that accompanied that. And this is the artist's conception of what happened in Palestine and Mexico and China. Lightning meteorites being rained down as the comet's head came closer to the earth, uh, followed by floods. Same in Mexico where water swept over the entire land, great gigantic tides. There were repeated changes in the earth's orbit in the lengths of day, the seasons, and the year. In these catastrophes, entire species of animals were annihilated. Others proliferated from wholesale mutations. Mankind was decimated. Civilizations destroyed. The papyrus of Ipuwer synchronized biblical and Egyptian events and led to a reconstruction of ancient history. Many questions debated for centuries found an answer. In the Bible, the identity of the beautiful Queen of Sheba at the court of Solomon was unknown. In Egyptian records, the land of Punt, visited by Queen Hatshepsut, could not be determined. In Velikovsky's reconstruction, it is clear that Punt is the land of Solomon and Hatshepsut is the Queen of Sheba. The biblical story of Joshua, with the sun standing still in Gibeon and the moon in the valley of Ajalon, presented another realization. I was struck by the fact that two lines or two verses before the story of the sun and moon disturbed in their daily motion was the story of large stones that fell from the sky and destroyed more of the enemy soldiers than the sword of the Israelite. On this combination, because combination of stones and disturbance in rotation of the earth, the ancient could not know that it was the earth that was disturbed in rotation. They thought the moon and the sun made me immediately to follow the path toward east and west. And I found without great difficulty that in Western Hemisphere, which means here on this continent, <coughs> the story persists too. The story persists among the Redskins, it persisted among the Mayas at the time when the continent was first conquered, the Mexico part of it, by the Spaniards, namely that the sun was rising just over the eastern horizon when it dropped back and came a little up again and stand there without motion, and all the forests burned. Again, the Redskin could not know about the heat resulting from disturbance in the Earth's rotation. So, of course, this would be not enough. You had to go to all civilization, 
to Japan, to China, to India, to Persia, to Babylonia, to Assyria, to Asia Minor, to Greece, to Rome, to Judea, to Egypt, to Mexico, to Peru, to Iceland, and for oral transmission, even to East Indies. And the same story could have been found in all places, but differently told, so that it was no question of just borrowing from one nation by another. So this was was the collision, the story of human memory of catastrophes that took place in historical times, but strangely, despite the fact that they were described in so many sources, as if non-existent for the scientific world. Other ancient documents tell of the thunderbolts of the planet god Jupiter. Velikovsky understood that these thunderbolts referred to electromagnetic discharges between planets. This led to his claim that radio noises must emanate from Jupiter. In 1955, radio noises from Jupiter were discovered. It was this prediction and discovery that finally convinced Einstein of the merit of Velikovsky's ideas. This prediction and confirmation of radio noises from Jupiter convinced Einstein to seek crucial experiments on Velikovsky's ideas. After Einstein's death, his estate wrote letters to this effect, but with no result. One of the most interesting cases that uh, are these uh, mammoths that are frozen in the uh, Yukon or in Alaska, frozen in the muck and the gravel of uh, that area that uh, still have food in their mouths. Uh, the flesh uh, is, has been preserved in the, uh, in the ice. So that actually when they were dug out, when they were digging for gold, uh, they could actually feed the, uh, the flesh of these animals to, to sledge dogs. Whatever happened, uh, happened suddenly, as, for example, the tilting of the axis of the earth and uh, freezing them right there uh, where, where they were found. Why did the ancients uh, worship uh, stars or planets that uh, the average person can't pick out of the sky today? And yet, uh, all of our uh, ancient heritage that comes to us in terms of architecture, uh, writing, and so on, they're, they're actually obsessed with, uh, with the idea of worshiping these stars, these dreaded planets. Uh, all mankind uh, through the years have uh, uh, worshipped uh, stars that we can't even pick out of the sky today. Now why? Why were they so obsessed with them? Unless in some way uh, these stars uh, were threats to them, uh, in some way impressed themselves upon uh, ancient man. A book like Old Testament is read maybe more than any other book through the centuries. It's translated to all languages. And you read there about sea and land changing places, about mountain moving into the sea, mountain being overturned, mountain melting like wax. And you think that this is matter, of course. And so it is the phenomenon that Freud stressed and stressed again of the role of traumatic experience on the life of an individual. But he stressed also another point, namely that the victim of this partial amnesia lives under the urge to repeat the traumatic experience, sometimes changing roles, making somebody else the victim. And mankind today, advanced enough in technology, produced the nuclear weapons that could be like symbol or something representing the ancient violent celestial body that through fire and smoke disturbs the rotation of the earth. Now if man is under the urge to repeat the ancient catastrophic events, the ancient trauma, are we not in a predicament? It is not a preaching to be better. It is a preaching to know 
yourself. As long as a man doesn't remember his past, he acts as a neurotic, a person who suffered a traumatic experience. Due to this traumatic experience, suffered also an amnesia. Are there any rituals uh, that we are practicing now which would seem to uh, uh, indicate a repetition of this uh, trauma? Not only any ritual, almost all rituals in religions, in various religions, all our observation in some way go back to the astral religion, to the beginnings that are rooted in the catastrophic events of the past.